60,000 people watch me score a goal at my home stadium. And in the build up to the match, I kept saying to everyone, yeah, playing on my own bitch, of course I'm going to score. If I score, I'm going to take my top off. Oh, I'm doing like a <laughs> like a top off knee slide to the corner flag. I wanted that moment, you know, where you feel like a footballer. Yeah. And I hit the coldest knee slide. <laughs> I hit the coldest. That's the one thing I was happy. I got the shirt off in time. <laughs> and I the knee slide, cameraman right in front of me, got the whole thing. I retired the boots I was wearing because they've still got chalk on them from where I hit Wicked. the knee slide. Wow. So I retired them and, and I kept them, kept them safe. Hello and welcome to Ironcast and welcome to our our first celebrity guest. What an honor Don't. to have a social media icon amongst us, Ant Anton. Bazinga, like Ethan Payne, welcome to Ironcast. I'm not a celebrity. But where do we go from here, Ethan? Who do we get? Danny Dyer? No. I'm, I'm not a celebrity. We're at the top. Can we go I'm not higher? A celebrity. Why, 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 do you, why do you not class yourself as a celebrity? I am a man from Romford that <laughs> uploads YouTube videos. That's what I am. And has become an, um, a massive celebrity. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> So, my, sure. When I told my son I was coming and yeah. interviewing you, he was buzzing. Oh, like he was yeah. he was over the moon. No, I, do, I, I, I do think, yeah, I suppose. So I just still like being normal. Hey. I like being normal. By the way, he's gone to school today going, by the way, my dad's in, interviewing Ethan. <laughs> he is. That's what he's done today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massively. We have to get a picture and send it to him. 100%. Yeah, We'd yeah, love yeah. that. Yeah. Do you still go back to Romford? Yeah, I'm I'm local to there. Um, my missus, his family still like Hornchurch, Romford. So I'm there every weekend, play football around there every weekend. So is it Legends Nightclub? Is that still around? What was it? Time and Envy? Time, Time and Envy. No, no, it shut down. It got, it got shut down. Oh. It's literally recently closed. I knew it as fiction. And then a sort of liquid and envy last couple of years, then it changed to fiction. Time and Envy was my when I yeah, was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, less, caught, the like... less said about that, the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've heard some stories. Hey, cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, side men have really branched out. What about time and then Have you got a side men nightclub? Time yeah. and everything would be perfect. Not exactly. just yet. Yeah, we should take it over. One of them is still up for sale. <laughs> uh, we should say you're a massive West Ham fan. Yes. Can you, like, why? Bro, why? Tell us why. I feel like, again, where I grew up, it was just second nature. Everyone I knew was a West Ham fan, brought up in a family we watch West Ham on the weekend. So like as far back as I can remember, um, I left it in the other room. I got asked to bring memorabilia. I've still got my Dr. Martin's baby kit and I, I brought that with me. It's like, no the, way. yeah, it's the official one that I wore when I was that little. I actually saw that and I thought, that's, you've just got that in the club shop. No. It's, it looks brand new. No, yeah. So my mum, bless her, kept it in like pristine condition. And then obviously I've got, I've got a little girl now that's about to be 17 months old. Um, and I whacked her in it the other day. It sort of dwarfs her, but like, it's amazing to to see like, I, and I've still got pictures on my phone of me wearing it on like climbing frames and stuff. So that's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, so I've wow. still got the actual one that I wore. So try and keep it in the family. I love all that's that. That's so cool. Yeah. And what was your first game? Do you remember first game over Upton Park? I think it was against West Brom, uh, but I don't know what, what it was. I was so small. I used to stand on the seats. So we used to, it's a funny story. Uh, it's a company that my, my dad used to work for called London City Bond. It's like a wine warehouse. Used to give wine to Bobby Zamora, and Bobby Zamora used to give him some tickets in sort of return. So I used to get some tickets in Sever Sir Trevor Brooking stand. I used to stand next to all the like the odd <laughs> <laughs> um, and stand on the seat, and then I've given it large over to the away fans. They're picking me up, going way. So yeah, that, that's what I grew so up. So it was on. you that was hammering me then. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a little kid. There was a little kid in in Sir Trevor Booking stand. It was you that was hammering me. It must yeah, have been probably. It had to have been. <laughs> but I feel like that's what was so great about West Ham is like you could just sit next to someone and they just take you in instantly. Oh, massive! That's yeah, like yeah. that's what it was, and you sort of felt safe around all these like geezers and that. But yeah, here we go. So bang! Look that at is, that. That's unbelievable. That is. I mean, you still see it's a little bit worn picky that is that, so but, pristine. Yeah, that is that's one of my favorite that shirts. is proper feeler yeah look, here we go feeler size sb small boy brilliant oh class. no name on the back no no name on the back this was like yeah just class man class oh, absolutely man. Class. that's Very one of my good. favorite shirts it, it's such a lovely kit this is why not last seasons the season before and it sort of looked like this yeah love that kit yeah love that kit it was like a modern remake but yeah let's talk about favorite kits then so All right. uh, in your lifetime yeah just what's your what's your top home and away Top home and away. Oh, this has got to be home. Like this, 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 this Dr. Dr. Martin's sponsor is just like iconic for me. Yeah. Proper, Dagna Motors is close. <laughs> Dagna Motors is very close. Uh, away kit though. I really like the, um, the dark navy with the yellow. 
the Reebok one. Yeah, yeah, that was my, one. That yeah. Was, that was my first year. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was my first year. I love that kit. I had that kit. I don't know if my mum. By the way, you got it. people in the background shaking their head, thinking, "Oh my, what's he gone with there?" Mate, I love that <laughs> kit. I'm, I love that kit. I love that kit so much. And to be fair, I know it's recency bias, but out of all, all white number now. It's, oh wow. Whoa, wow! Yeah, that's lovely. That's you, class. You, when you put it on, you you feel really smart. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could wear it on a night out. Mm -hmm. Big time. It's time lovely, and that. envy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chris. I said less <laughs> spoken <laughs> about <laughs> that. The better for time me. and envy. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, did you have like mm. posters on your wall? Was there any like any West Ham players you were obsessed with? Yeah, well, I, I was talking to Anton beforehand. I used to, uh, I used to come to like signing days. I used to do it at the bowling and stuff, and I'd have like my book, get everyone to sign it, get the pictures with the whole squad. Um, but I had a real like thing for Yossi Ben Aoun, man. I just loved, <laughs> player. I loved the way he played, man. What a player! Like I just, I, and I used to wear fifteen all the time because I really, yeah, I used to get like yeah, pain fifteen. Just love it. Yeah. Love, love the way he played, and he, he was here for like such a short sort of spell. But yeah, just love the way he played football. Anton, you told me something about Yossi Benayoun had that chop mm. and yeah. just mm -hmm. discombobulated everyone around yeah, him. Yeah, and, yeah, and Anton, yeah. you said like you came up against him on training. You knew that chop was coming, but there's nothing you could do. Yeah, about. Absolutely nothing you can do. Like he, you know, what it was it was the shape, but he would sometimes shape to chop and fake and continue to <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. So it was like you had to like second guess him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it, that's what was hard. But I'm a little bit um, upset that you, <laughs> that you said 15 <laughs> and you've not mentioned me or Rio. It's a disgrace. <laughs> That's an iconic number for our I family. Know, I know, I know. Listen, it's an iconic number for our family. You, you were fantastic. I, 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 Don't just I, say because I'm me. No, 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 Ethan, no. Listen, on. I got big. I got big love for you. I thought you was quality. Thank you. But um, yeah, I just I, I, I like playing midfield as well. But I mean, starting when I started playing football, I was just a bit. <laughs> so I, I played. I, play, I played anywhere in the defensive line. But as I sort of got better, I, I like playing in midfield. So, yeah. yeah. But we'll get onto that because well, let's start with the side men and yeah. like being a YouTube personality, like. How did that all start for you, like content creation? It's like 2013 is where roughly when you started. Yeah, isn't it? well, I, well, I started my channel that I currently have around then, but I've been doing it since I was 13, and I'm 28 now, about to be 29. Wow. So yeah, I've been doing it for a very, very long time, and um, it all started just from wanting to share gaming clips. I think very few people back in the day were just sharing gaming clips, um, and I was sort of very early to that, and I think that's again a blessing because it's so saturated now that. Um, I, I, I stood out then, but I don't think I'd stand out now, if you know what I mean, but yeah. Do you know, do you know what, what I find amazing now that I do like podcasts and stuff mm. like that? Content's so hard to get right. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And mm. not just that, I think there's times when you go through lows mm. in it, but you just got to keep going and keep going yeah. and keep going. Was that what it was like for you? Yeah, big time. I've I've had my trials and tribulations with like getting burnt out and then like the weight of expectations of people. Once you get to a certain size, it feels like everybody wants you to post these videos and post whatever, but sometimes you may not feel up to it or whatever. Things aren't going your way. So yeah, definitely you go through peaks and troughs, but I think one of the main things is like you get you get an audience that like you for you and, and then trying to remember that that's what they're actually interested in. They don't care what, how many times you upload, what you're doing and what, they just care that, you're right and you want to post or whatever because it shines through as well like if you're enjoying it they're going to enjoy it of course yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's what i get when watching you and your mm. missus yeah yeah, yeah. Like, i'm gonna say it but like, i sit down with my missus and watch it <laughs> it's brilliant <laughs> i love it quality so i'll tell I you what it. it's amazing right anybody over a certain age uh they love it so i get this off of like are you saying i'm old no 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 because listen i class myself old. as old now i'm a little bit past it um but anyone i bump into that is sort of like my age or older they're like mate the thing you do with your missus i love it because it is just normal it's normal yeah. raw get yeah. on there chat chat load of waffle with your missus whatever and it, people enjoy it but i feel like younger generation have this sort of like the social media idea of a relationship where it's like oh yeah you've got to be so in love oh, i'm taking her out for coffee i'm doing this and blah, 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 whatever and like i think just uh, yeah again uh, the generation like my generation above sort of get it a bit a lot more yeah. yeah and that dynamic i mean if you look at chris and rosie ramsey they're mm. like selling out wembley arena yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. is that next are you gonna you're in the who knows <laughs> who knows it would be quite funny though <laughs> So, so like YouTube in back in 2013, how, how quick was the rise? It seemed to be cool. like astronomical, well, like really quickly. Yeah, it happened very quickly. But like the bit you don't see is like me posting videos that got 20, 30 views for like two, three years. Um, that's a bit that people don't see. Like even if you go back on my channel now, there's a couple of videos with like 120 odd views. Uh, and that, that's sort of where 
you'd be like, I used to do thank you videos for like every 50 subscribers. I'd be like, we just hit 150 subscribers. Thank you so much. Wow. And that would be the video for the day. Um, but yeah, it is. And then you sort of, a new game would come out like FIFA or something like that. And that's always like an opportunity. There's like two months around a new release where like, if you hit the ground running, you're going to fly. So that's when you, it came in cycles and you sort of had to hit it right every year. Yeah. And then you became part of the Sidemen mm. formed, which is like, I don't know how to describe it for people who may not know, like a super group of YouTubers. I like to call us a uh, YouTube boy band that have <laughs> at, no actual talent, really. <laughs> J, JJ's like the only geezer. And again, even he says he just works hard. He ain't actually talented. So it is just like a group of mates. You could find a group of Sidemen in a pub. Like you could find, there's a group chats full of like six, seven people. But we just decided to film our friendship and sort of it took off from there. Yeah, and you all live together at one point, and now your yeah. exploits are, I mean, <laughs> it used to be you in your bedroom recording a little message thanking 150 subscribers. Yeah. Now it's like, it's private jets. It's, it is, It's yeah. insane. It, it, you're not wrong. It is mega. I I always say it's gone too far. Like, we'll check in for like a cheap versus expensive video, and it'll be like, oh, the expensive team are going on a private I say it's gone too far. We've got private jets for like 20 odd people. It's mental. But yeah, yeah, that's when it's sort of like a pinch yourself moment. It's like, cool. Do you know what? Hearing you say that, but obviously hearing your journey, mm. it's inspirational, man. Thank I, you very I, much. I love it. Thank I really you. do. And I, because of that, I want to ask a question because a lot of young West Ham fans will be mm. watching this. What would you say to them? Any young West Ham fan who, who wants to be a YouTuber, yeah, what yeah. would you say to them? I think the key thing is be authentically yourself. Don't try and copy things. Like there's obviously, you can take inspiration from concepts that people are posting or how they're doing things, but you've always got to put your own spin on it because that's what makes you you. And then other people are going to identify you with and and then it, maybe they can relate to certain aspects like that's why uh, the side men so great because you've got seven different people like i've been through sort of like weight issues whatever jj does boxing like there's so many different aspects it's multifaceted that you can sort of like connect to so as long as you're putting your own self across and it's you 100 percent to your core people are gonna be able to go uh i like him i can get on board with that also, like being in the side, men has given you so many opportunities. And yeah. let's talk through some of the ones that I think are cool, like getting followed by the West Ham Twitter account. Yeah. As a social media personality, that must have been. Do you remember? How did it big happen? Big time, big time. I remember showing uh, my missus. I was like, oh, look, West Ham, follow me. West Ham, follow me. <laughs> and it's so funny, though, isn't it? Because it's like, <laughs> like football club follows all their players, or whatever, maybe like sponsors or whatever. Bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Um, yeah, it's sort of, again, it's always a case of like, how is this happening? But yeah. That's what tells you you're a massive celebrity though. <laughs> really? yeah, West Ham only yeah, follows yeah, 200 yeah. people. Yeah. Do West, Ham follow, do West Ham follow you, Anton? Just about. <laughs> Just about. Stay I to ask. <laughs> Any danger, <laughs> guys? Any danger? I did used to play it. Can you follow me, please? <laughs> the other big one is you did a Sidemen charity match right here at the London Stadium. And yeah. Talking about living every West Ham fan's dream. Mm. Not only did you play yeah. at the home of West Ham, you scored. I scored. Scored a goal. And I, I think even just in general, like growing up, everyone always thinks, oh, I'd love to play on that pitch. Imagine if I ever got to play on that pitch. And that's just like in an empty stadium, let alone full up like 60,000 60, people watch me score a goal at my home stadium. It was mental. And in the build up to the match, I kept saying to everyone, yeah, playing on my own pitch, of course I'm going to score, whatever. And I was just giving it the <laughs> yaffa yaffa. Like, but yeah, the fact that I scored the opener as well. Like, you can't write it. It's like a movie script. How did it feel, though? Oh, I don't even know what happened. Like, even now, I watch it back, and there's, like, a couple of different angles where there's one, one video as well. Someone was wearing a GoPro, and, like, as the ball hits the net, the whole stadium, like, roars. But, like, I don't even remember that. Did you go cold? Yeah, like, you don't know what's happening. So, right, and I thought, what I've got to do is just hit it hard and low. Hit it hard and low, and it goes in. That's That's what happens. And I see it hit the net and it was sort of, again, I'd been saying, yeah, I want a knee slide. I wanted that moment, you know, where you feel like a footballer. Yeah. And I hit the coldest knee slide. <laughs> I hit the coldest. That's the one thing I was happy. I got the shirt off in time. And I the knee slide, cameraman right in front of me, got the whole thing. Um, I retired the boots I was wearing because they've still got chalk on them from where I hit Wicked. the knee slide. Wow. So I retired them and, and I kept them, kept them safe. Wicked. Do you know what's crazy? Everything you explained there, 
I, I had that one I scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Upton Pot. Which yeah. one? The Fulham, the Fulham, the Fulham one. The Fulham one is a joke, though. Yeah. The Fulham one. I just one. didn't do the knee slide. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I, I went and got back up. That's I what think, it was. I think you could have done better with your celebration for that Fulham. Yeah, because you know, you're, uh, you're just yes. going, oh my God. Mate, if I score oh a goal God. like that. <laughs> oh my do you know what? Like you can't believe it. That's rude, Chris. Come on. <laughs> of course I could. Of course I could. <laughs> Did you mean that? No, Did, like, 100% I mean you it. On it. 100% you swivel on it. You swivel on it. You swivel it's on it. It's one of the greatest goals I've ever seen. It's <laughs> gone. No, You're coming you know out of defence. Do you know what? But I got them feelings. Yeah. You know it was one of those. It was instinct. Yeah. The ball come over shoulder. Just hit it. Yeah. Just hit it. Just get good connection. And it went in. Yeah, wallop it. And do you know what? Going cold. Yeah, yeah. Rush of blood. Yeah, yeah. But you're cold, which yeah. is mad. Yeah. And then, like, you had yours planned. I didn't mm. score many goals, so it was like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, what do yeah, I yeah. do? You know, that's why yeah. the, that is why the, the celebration was I so think what, <laughs> what stood out for me was I could hear... Uh, so it was really cute, actually. So Simon's actually captain Sideman FC for every charity match. And um, just as before we'd done the team tour, done the lineup or whatever, um, they uh, uh, who was managing us, uh, Billy Wingrove was managing mm -hmm. us that day. And he was like, all right, lads, a uh, big moment for one of our players. And then they gave me the captain's armband as oh, well. Come so on. even That's then I was sort of like a bit emotional already walking out. I, I walked out with my daughter as well. Which so is? I was sort of like captain's armband on, walked out with my daughter. And again, this is why I say it was like a movie. You can't write, score in the opener, win the match, lifting the trophy. Mental. But yeah, yeah I remember hearing. Me and, me and Chris are available. <laughs> manager, manager and assistant manager, we're available. Yeah, I'll shout you. We, um, I remember he hearing. <laughs> he I remember hearing um, it was Toby especially. And he's, he's a person that will always be so happy for other people. He's got loads of goals at Sideman matches. But I could hear him screaming from like the center circle. And in a, it's mental how you can pick up on like little things yeah. like that. And then ever yeah, that's because uh, I could tell like, oh, sh and then I got really emotional when everyone was hugging me because I was like, they know how much like it means to me as well. Do you know what? You lived what a footballer lives. Yeah. Everything you're describing, you lived exactly what a footballer lives. Yeah. Like hearing voices you're used to mm. in a packed stadium. Yeah. That's why we like, I used, I could, if my mum was or my dad would have been around the front row yeah. and they were shouting money, I would have heard them. Yeah. Really? All yeah. yeah. You, you, you gravitate to the voices that you know. Yeah. That's, that's so why weird. training every day is so important. Yeah. And people talking on the pitch is so important. Big time. It could be 60,000 people, but you will hear a mm. voice that you're familiar to. We were chatting just before this, mm. like you've played in games against Deco. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah. like Who are the big, big footballers you've come up against? I think Deco's got to be, he's the biggest. Because like, I remember playing, um, I remember playing FIFA Street back in the day. Right. And that game was class. And it had all the best. And Deco's on there as like a tidy midfielder scoring game breakers with him. So then when you're lining up with him in Baku of all places, I'm thinking, what on earth is going on? But I thought, I'm going to give it some. Um, <laughs> managed to win that game. And, no I, and, and I got an assist. So yeah. You Lovely. beat Deco. I beat Deco. <laughs> Was he still Lovely. unbelievable? Yeah, yeah. Still like... a player. Still a player. You can tell. It's just so easy to to someone like that though, isn't it? They just get it shifted. Passing range is mental. What was you like though? Was you like, you can't touch me? Was you, was you like that? Or I, was I, you... I, I will always put in like, above and beyond that's because I feel like that's what I give to even my, I know it's Sunday league, but like, I love Sunday league. So I will always put in 150% because I, I think that's what I bring. I, I won't stop running the whole game. So I just, that's what my sort of like key uh, ability is. Question. Did you learn that being a West Ham fan, watching, obviously hearing the, the fans? 100% influence. Mark, no, Mark Noblesque, Mate, with, inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without without a doubt, it influences it. Because I think, again, you you grow up and we we until recent times, we haven't really been successful. You get relegated, you come back up, you get relegated, come back up. You just want someone that you, you can tell as soon as they step over the white line, don't matter who I'm playing. I don't care if I'm playing against Yaya Torre, whoever it is. I'm go I'm I'm going to play better than you today. Yeah. Like, put put it on them. <laughs> uh, so and that that's sort of what I do. I try I try and do that. I, I, anyone that I'm playing against, all right, let me get older and see what see what happens. So like the dream of any West Ham fan is maybe to play play at the London Stadium, score yeah. a goal, but also to see your team win something. Yeah. And boy, did you experience that. I there's did. a there's a great YouTube video which <laughs> goes all through it. But can you talk us through your day in Prague? So that was sort of like when I'm like 60, 70 old, I'm gonna be able to put, I'll be like, I was at the last game at the bowling, which again, that's even just a mental story. That's like yeah. a script written in stars. I was at that game, I was at the final. And what I like to be able to do is 
bring people along that I care about that will also like take it in and, and then that's a memory shared with everyone so like again when you're older you say remember when we went to Prague for that day and, and mm -hmm. like, just smash it out um but yeah it was pretty pretty 100 miles an hour landed in Prague in the morning dropped our things off at a hotel then sort of just got out when and when I met the trophy because I had that in like the square and then did you touch it yeah did touch it yeah, oh yeah, you got, you got, you got bad luck though in it no but I've, I've got a, I've got a picture with the trophy yeah uh, after yeah I was gonna yeah, say yeah, that yeah, you've, yeah. Met, you've since held the trophy yeah exactly heavy by heavy the way. heavy 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 artillery that um, <laughs> I I was actually I, I did the um the trophy lift the Stratford Town Hall and Kurt had the Kurt Zuma had the trophy and I said can I grab it have mm. a picture and I went to hold it with one arm <laughs> and I nearly dropped the trophy <laughs> yeah, imagine. so heavy. Nah, heavy, imagine heavy imagine that yeah, no, be it. no iron cast that'd be that <laughs> it was uh, it was just a mental day out though and then I, I think once once I got in the stadium that was when it sort of all like you get the oh, oh. my god this is gonna happen and um how did you feel like walking into that stadium like seeing I remember the warm up, the atmosphere was yeah, already crackling. Yeah. What was crazy is is we we'd pretty much packed the old stadium. There weren't there weren't many Fiorentina in there. Even like around I was lucky enough to be just behind the players' friends and family. Um so looking out to the stadium, it was just everywhere. And I was like, This is this is our night. Like there's no way. Can't have packed this stadium like this to then not go and win it. And um again, it was like perfect for me to just where I was sat as well is because all, all the celebrations were sort of over there as well. The players were over there. Even at the end of the game, they're coming to that corner, giving it large. So it was sort of like, I'd, I was just watching it all. Like, oh my God, it's happened. Cried like a little baby, of course. <laughs> like, but it, it, you can't, can't put a price on anything like that, can you? Like, mm -mm. and especially when you're with people with like, hugging them, crying. It's like, oh my God, f damn it. I, I say this a lot, that I'm thankful that I'm alive. To, I was alive yeah. to watch it, to witness it. Mm. You know, because a lot of West Ham fans before us who have yeah. supported West Ham for many, many years, and sadly weren't here to, to witness yeah. it. So that in itself, for me, plays a massive part in how I, special it was. I said to my missus, I said, like, you got to understand, right? So like having my daughter scoring a goal here and watching us win a trophy, there's not much between all three of them, right? <laughs> there's not much between. And I was trying to say, like that us having that trope it might never happen again in my lifetime like i might not see us mm -hmm. win anything european ever again that's just the nature of the beast but uh, listen things are trending in the right direction thank are you your missus not saying where, where am i in that list? <laughs> <laughs> she's not saying where am i in that yeah, list? listen i've got space for top three <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she, yeah and it's funny it. you say about people crying because like i was chatting to joe cole about this mm. and he said he said, don't want to brag, but I've been on the pitch when trophies have been won a few yeah. times in my career. He said, but I never saw anything like I saw in Prague because mm. everyone, everyone in the West Ham end was in tears. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. people in the stand, I was the same. People around me, grown men, 60, 70 years old, floods of tears. Mm. And I think it's like you say, it's because it just meant so much yeah. to everybody. It was mm. such an outpouring of emotion. Yeah. It was impossible not to get caught up in it. Yeah, it is, it's sort of like that trophy is the physical, real thing there that you can touch of like, we've been waiting a whole life for this. Like, that's what I tried to say as well, is like, I've known West Ham, obviously you don't remember like zero to whenever, but I've known West Ham my whole life and that mm -hmm. I've been attached to that my whole life. It's my longest relationship. It will be my longest relationship. So having the physical manifestation thing there, like, oh my God, we've done it, is like, yeah, just happy tears come out. Oh man, I'm getting goosebumps here. <laughs> it's lovely. About it. So we had a wonderful summer and then we've made some brand new signings, mm -hmm. even, you know, Kudus, Alvarez. Yeah. What have you made of the new boys this season? So like, James Ward-Prowse, right? I can't believe that we got a free run at him for 30 million. That don't make sense mm -hmm. to me. English midfielder, literally like mustard. Right? Like, he's just amazing. It deliveries, everything. Amazing. That is a steal. That's a proper bargain. Kudus, player. <laughs> yeah. Player. Player. Yeah. Like anyone he plays against. Yeah, player. Um. Alvarez, I like it. Proper like it. That's a bit of me. That's what I like. Yeah. Get into him. Yeah. Stick, Calvin Phillips as well. Calvin midfield. Phillips, yeah. I'm excited to see where he, how he gets along because I think I think as soon as he starts stringing more minutes together, I think you'll get him back to where he was. So, yeah, I'm excited to see that. And then you actually unveiled Lucas Pacquiao. Yeah, that's I mean, mental. that's another pinch me moment. That, yeah, that is mental. Again, always blessed to do stuff with West Ham. So, but when, when you know that you've got Again, player. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got someone like him yeah. coming over, and I mean that day is quite funny because oh, he don't speak a lick of English. <laughs> um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Translator next to him, so I'm sitting there nodding, but like all I'm thinking yeah. is, 
this is class. Like, <laughs> he's going to be so good. And then if he is so good, I'm the one that sort of brought him into the stadium. It was me. I did it. Hello, mate. Yeah, how are you? Welcome to West Ham. Obviously, we're massive. <laughs> I think that was one of the lines in there as well. So, yeah. Did you leak the transfer? Did you get in trouble for leaking it? Yeah, it was a, a slight <laughs> comeuppance. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> slight, slight comeuppance. Overexcited. <laughs> yeah, yeah he just, just someone that I was... Yeah, yeah, someone I knew messed up. Oh, yes, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hear the content team yeah. tutted around us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. You're in the good books now. Yeah. Um, yeah, so now, I mean, Sideman, you've got this brand new Netflix documentary coming yes. out soon. It's out now. It's out now. It's out now. Come out on Valentine's Day. So uh, any ladies out there that had boyfriends that like the Sidemen, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been out now two days. Yeah, yeah. So. And what was it like filming a doc documentary for Netflix? Well, what, basically, we... We have like just this catalogue of loads of behind the scenes footage that was sort of captured over the last couple of years. Um, so there was loads of this just log of what the sidemen get up to and what we do is covering the charity match at Charlton. It's a shame the one here wasn't in it, but it was filmed like a little while ago. Um, and then obviously has to go through all the edits. But yeah, it is because I was trying to explain this because I am one of the sidemen. I wake up every day and live it. So like. I wake up, the chat's going off, what we're doing this week, whatever. It's only when you have something like that, like a piece that you sit down and watch and you go, we've done a lot. We have done a lot. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that again, that is now just like a piece in time that people can sort of look into and be like, oh, this is what they did. This is what they still do. Who knows how long we're going to carry on. But yeah. That's legendary and legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, you've got a, a daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly, that's something for her to watch. Exactly, yeah. I, I always think that. Like, we got we got a big TV in the living room, and she usually watches all our cartoons on it. But then every now and then, if uh, like there's a sideman video, or whatever, she goes, "That day, that day." Hmm. And I, I always, it's it's quite hard to grasp the concept of how to say like, "Yeah, this is what Daddy does." He's just like having fun with his mates on the TV. But that's that's where I go to work. Yep. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Wicked. Ethan, it's been so much fun chatting. Your love for West Ham really shines through. But one final question. Who's your favourite player of all time? Are you going to get stick with Yossi or is there... Oh, that's too hard to end on because now my brain's going <laughs> mental. <laughs> my brain's going mental. Listen here, I had a real, again, a real sort of affection for Yossi. But it's always going to be nopes. It's, oh. all, it's always going to be nopes because again, it's the type of player I like. Like 100%, put it in every game, no matter what. He's he's never given you below like an eight for West Ham, is he? Like he's always putting it in. So yeah, it's got to be him. Oh man, there you go. Wicked. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bazinga. And thank you for listening. This has been Ironcast. First celebrity guest in the bag. He's not a celebrity, but thanks to Bazinga nonetheless. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Come on, you irons. <laughs>